Hey guys, it's Larissa. I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5 and give you some thoughts. Don't take my word for anything I say. Make sure you're reading the Bible yourself, praying, and getting discernment from the Holy Spirit. Not a teacher, just Larissa reading the Bible. Okay. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace, for we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Stand fast, therefore. Maintain your stance of freedom. You're, you're free from bondage. You're free from the law. You're not under the law. You're free. He says, stand fast at the liberty which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again into the yoke of bondage. Do not, do not get roped back in to thinking that your works are going to get you into heaven. He says, Paul says, if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised, he's a debtor to keep the whole law. So if you decide to become circumcised, you're going to have to keep the entire law. If you think that you have to keep one part of the law, you're going to have to keep the entire law, not just a part of it. And then he says, you have become estranged from Christ. You have become of no effect towards Christ, towards his finished work. All this that he's done for you is no effect to you. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. You've fallen from the grace of God whenever you start trying to do works and get yourself into heaven. What Christ did on the cross is not enough for you. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Um. Acts 15, verse 10. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Why do you put this yoke of bondage on the disciples, on people? Why do you say, oh no, you can't get into heaven unless you do this, this, and this? Why are you putting that yoke of bondage that you and the apostles and everyone else was not able to even bear? We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. We believe on Jesus that we will be saved. God's grace becomes ineffective in the life of those who trust in their own works for their own salvation. They think that they can get into heaven by what they're doing. So everything that Christ has done is no effect to them. Okay. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty only. Do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another. So, you ran well. You were doing so well. Who hindered you? Who blocked your way? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. It doesn't come from God. A little leaven, a little corruption leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Who is he? Satan using the Judaizers. Satan using... Legalist Satan using Christians against Christians, saying, "No, you're just you're not 
justified by faith alone. You have to do works. You can't do works on your own. You have to have the fruit of the Spirit coming through you. He says, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? If I was still preaching, if I was preaching circumcision, then why are they persecuting me? Obviously, I'm telling things that they don't want you to hear. I'm telling you about the grace of God, and they are trying to teach you to stay under bondage. I wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Emasculate themselves is the nicest way I can think of to say that. That's what he's saying. If they want to keep you, if they want to circumcise they want to be circumcising you and they're so obsessed with this, then let them emasculate themselves. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty only. Do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Do not use the opportunity of this freedom that you have through Christ, that he has given you the grace, that he has forgiven your sins, that he has washed you clean with his blood, don't think that you can continue sinning and do whatever you want and continue in the flesh, continue in the spirit. The spirit will help you change from your evil ways. Your flesh is going to continue to want to sin. Even after you're saved, you're going to continue to want to sin. The only way you can overcome that is through Jesus and through the spirit. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going to go to Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus himself said it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's you love the Lord and you love your neighbors. By loving your neighbors, you are being compassionate, showing mercy, giving them grace. You're not devouring each other. Like it says, it says, but if you bite and devour one another, beware at least you are consumed by one another. You start snapping at your fellow Christians saying, you're supposed to be doing this. No, 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 no. And then they get offended and they start yelling back at you and then all of a sudden it's just a big quarrel you're just consuming one another don't do that if someone's coming at you ugly either try to speak to them in love and if that's not working ignore them walk away from them and pray for them because there's no point in getting into a giant discussion with what you know is the truth when you have the word of God showing you the truth and then you have someone coming at you trying to spit lies and cause divisions and make you get back under bondage whenever you know that's not the way that the Lord has called you to do. It's just like whenever they were in the wilderness and they were getting bit by the fiery serpents. Christ is that serpent that that sounds awful that didn't come out right, <laughs> right. but it was a foreshadowing. Christ was on the cross. Those who have faith in him are saved. Those in the wilderness that were getting bit by the fiery serpents that would look upon the snake that was on that, the cross, the rod that was up in the wilderness. And they said, he said, if you look on it and you have faith that you're, you're healed, then you're going to be healed. But those who don't believe are going to perish. And that is exactly what happened. And that is exactly the foreshadowing of Christ. Those who look on him and believe on him are saved. Those who don't believe that his work is enough will perish. Okay, that came out so aggressive. <laughs> anyway, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lu for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish, but you are led by the Spirit. You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts, wrath, outbursts of wrath, sorry, selfish ambitions, 
dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those are the works. It says, the works of the flesh, works of the flesh. Your flesh trying to work, even if you think that you're doing what's right, and your selfish ambitions, and your jealousy, and your outbursts of wrath and anger, and then your your dissensions and your heresies and you're trying to get people to do the works instead of the fruits. Now listen, but the fruit of the spirit, the fruit, this is the, the difference, the work of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit, the produce. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such. There is no law. And those who are, Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Do not let us provoke one another. If you disagree with your brother or sister in Christ, why are you going to try to fight with them? That doesn't make any sense. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, and peace. Your attitude towards God long-suffering, kindness, goodness, how you react socially, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, your conduct as a Christian. Against such, there's no law. Because those who are Christ have been crucified in their flesh. Your flesh has been crucified with Christ. You no longer live for yourself. Christ lives in you. Therefore, you walk according to the Spirit along the path that he lays, not according to what your flesh wants to do. You don't walk according to all these fleshly desires. And it's so difficult because you, as a human, are made of flesh. You're carnal. You want to do the things that would make you feel good. But you have to crucify that. You have to put it under the blood of Christ. You have to submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. You have to say, okay, I'm struggling with this God and lay it out. He knows what you need before you ask him. Doesn't mean you don't ask him. Doesn't mean you don't say, Lord, I need you to help me with this. You lay out your burdens to him. You give them to him and he will help you. He will take your burdens away from you. And he won't take them away from you without you asking him. He's a gentleman. You have to say, I'm struggling. I need you to help me with this, this, and this. And you will slowly see those things, your desire for them, fade away. You can't do it on your own. This is not possible by your own works, by your own flesh. Your flesh and your works are not going to do it. You have to trust in the fruit of the Spirit. You have to trust in Christ. You have to trust that the Holy Spirit will lay down a path that you can walk on. Anyways. That is chapter 5, and I'm sorry for being aggressive, but here it is. I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. God willing. Thanks. Bye.